Hey, it's Megan. Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are doing 15 different Dollar Tree DIYs for fall. Now I know it may be a little bit early for you and if that's the case, that's fine. Hey, come on back when you're ready, my friend. But if you were like me and you need extra time to DIY, this video is definitely for you. These are actually 15 of my favorite DIYs from last year, but considering, and this is so crazy, like mind blowing to me. I have about 170,000 more YouTube friends here. I decided it'd be a good time to share again before I kick off like the official brand new DIYs for fall. And now I'm rambling, but thank you to everyone who subscribed. I love you, you're amazing. And we're getting started right now. <laughs> For this first DIY, we're making a really cute and simple pumpkin wreath. You just need three to four packs of these pumpkin clips from Dollar Tree. Leave them as is, or you can paint them so easily. Pull the stem off, the stem will push right back in, and use your favorite fall colors to paint the pumpkins. These pumpkins also come in white. I've never seen them that way, so that might be easier for you if that's your style, but the orange works just fine too. Then just glue them all over one of Dollar Tree's larger wreath forms. I believe this one's 14 inches. And by the way, I just noticed they make like an 18 inch wreath form now too. So that's cool. And then you just need one to one and a half bags of Dollar Tree's brown moss. Glue that all over in between your pumpkins. I glued moss in the back just to give it more of a finished look. So if you omitted that step, you'd probably only need one bag. And here you go. Super cute pumpkin for like five, six, six to seven dollars. <laughs> I'm bad at math. I mean, super cheap for a super great big pumpkin. I love the way it looked. Then last year, the year before, and probably this year too, I just haven't really been to the old DT that much. Dollar Tree carries these luau banners where if you remove the L and the A as carefully as possible, and you can recklessly discard everything else however you want to, trace out LLA on some stock paper, com, construction paper, even scrap paper, maybe even fabric. And then to make the F, all you have to do is take your L, flip it upside down, trace out an F, leaving a little area to cross the F. You see what I'm saying there? And I just use the A to finish tracing out the F. Then cut it out and glue it on your banner. And that's it. That, that, that DIY is done. Super simple, super cute. And this has so many ways you can style it for only a dollar if you already have some type of paper on hand. But if you had to purchase some type of paper, then it might cost you $2. Still a great deal in my book. You could also make this reversible to say Noel. I just love the way it turned out, actually. <laughs> And we're on to the next one, which I feel like is one of my most underrated DIYs from last year. You just need one of these welcome mats from Dollar Tree. Take some painter's tape, which can also be found at Dollar Tree, and tape off the bottom. One of Dollar Tree sticker letters. And this rug is about 23 inches and some change <laughs> wide. Just measure off to 11.5 inches, start in the middle, and spell out to our patch. So starting with R, working your way out tape off the ends and the corners to make it a little bit more decorative. Then Dollar Tree's clear contact paper is one of my favorite crafting supplies, although any contact paper would work. I used some tape, different sizes, to make three little circles to create a pumpkin, different sizes, like one, two, three being bigger. Okay, hold on, let me rewind. <laughs> I used one size of tape roll for each pumpkin. I did three different sizes of pumpkins. You feel me on that? You see what I'm saying? And then you just cut it out and spray paint it. You can use any spray paint. I just used Walmart's 97 cent spray paint and gave it two solid thick coats and let that dry. And then you just peel it off. Go back with a Sharpie marker. Sharpie markers actually work really, really well on doormats. And I'll show you at the end of this DIY what it looks like after the end of the season. I think you'll probably be kind of impressed how well it does hold up. And then I just traced out everything else too. Now last year and the year before, Dollar Tree carried this Never Wet from Rust-Oleum just like this. You get both cans for a dollar. I have not seen it this year, but if you do see it, grab it up. That's a great deal. The cans themselves are like $15 in stores. And I've used this on other Dollar Tree rugs and it works out really well. So this is what it looks like last year, right when I finished. And this is what it looks like 
This year, after a season of use, and I use this outside in my front door, we literally wiped our feet on this rug. So it's not so bad, not a huge difference. What I think I may do this year though, is just kind of go back and color it in with some puff paint, add some color there. And I have it paired up with another DIY Dollar Tree rug I just did. <laughs> Although I wanna clarify, I am not decorating for fall right now. I was just styling and getting ideas. And so for this next DIY, we're making one of Dollar Tree's lanterns not using picture frames. You just need two shadow boxes from Dollar Tree, pull off the back and then pull off the little middle circle that usually comes with these. One of Dollar Tree's tumbling tower game where the blocks are conveniently the same size as the shadow box frame. Then I'm using gel super glue just because the fast dry time, I love how it has a strong hold, but you could probably use E6000 or wood glue too. Now the trick to using gel super glue is once you have it in place, don't touch it and move it for like 10 minutes. Then you're gonna have four rows of six blocks. Both the frame shadow boxes, both pretty sides are gonna be pointing up. So you see, this is the bottom of our lantern and the pretty finished side is pointing up. So the top of our lantern, the ugly side is pointing down, both ugly sides. So if I'm not making sense, hopefully you can see what I'm saying or hey, message me and I'll explain better in the comments. I don't know why I'm having such a hard time explaining this. I, I had a hard time explaining it the first time too. Either way, after you have it glued, it's gonna look just like this. I let it dry overnight for the best cure time, dry time. Then you can go back with some sandpaper and lightly sand the edges, focusing on the corners. And if you do need to give a lot of pressure, just kind of hold it in place. Like for real, if you use a lot of glue, wood glue or super glue, you're gonna be good. And then I prefer to use Rust-Oleum's white chalk paint. Chalk paint, no matter the brand, because it's a thicker paint and after two coats, it really helps fill in the cracks. But you can use whatever paint you wanna use. You could even go back and use some Dollar Tree spackle, I bet. I've never seen that in the store, but I've seen so many people use it. Then optional, go back and distress, I did because my inspiration came from Joann's. They had a lantern just like this, except it was smaller, y'all. And they wanted like a lot more money than the three and a half dollars it cost to make this one. After that, glue the bottom back on. And remember the little wood cutout part we pulled off? Glue that backwards, put that in the middle so we can have something to put our candle on. Then you can just use some of your favorite florals. I used some from Dollar Tree and Walmart's $1 florals and put it together and styled it and super cute lantern. Like you really cannot tell this is from Dollar Tree. You really can't see the seams. There are some areas if you get up close, but it's not totally obvious. And I love that this can be reused. So I also use this for Christmas. This next DIY, I'm totally stoked to share because these little shadow box houses have been reported to be back in stock at Dollar Tree, maybe even online. You just need two of each sizes, so two of the medium, two of the short and fat. Push off the backs and paint that white. Then we have some of the tumbling tower blocks left over from the last DIY. You're gonna use those to make the letter F and then two L's. Also using gel super glue to hold those together. Optional, you can paint them or spray paint them whatever color you want. I used ter territorial beige and then went back and distressed with burnt umber to make it look more log-like because that reminds me of fall. Although this would be super cute, spray painted black or any fall color of your choice. Use glitter if you want to. And then using one of Dollar Tree's little rogue leaves I had, I glued that to another little tumbling tower, Jenga block, and posted that right in the middle of the house. But you could also cut a Dollar Tree pumpkin in half or whatever you wanted to do really. But get creative, my friend. Then just hot glue the little shadow box frames back on and boom, there you go. Super simple and super cute fall decor. I was playing around with how I wanted to use this last year. I ended up putting it in the kitchen on top of the um, refrigerator and I did just like hot glue it to a little uh, piece of cardboard to keep them from falling over. But I think this is super cute and I love the way it turned out. One of the simplest ways to decorate for fall is just to use this simple black and white free printable I found online. I'll have that linked in the description. 
It comes in an eight by 10. I printed it off five by seven, layered it with some burlap, and then just put it into a Dollar Tree frame. Super simple. I mean, it really can't get any easier than this, but it also looks really nice. And it's great that nothing's glued together. Everything can be reused. I don't feel like I wasted anything because all of this can be reused again. And like I said, the free printable is linked in the description below for you to print off too. And now we're gonna make some of these no damage books. So we are not painting these books, we're not ripping them apart. You can use books you're currently reading, you've already read, or you can purchase some at Dollar Tree. Take some of Dollar Tree's craft paper, fold it down to the size of the book, and then just tape it on one side. Take your fingers and smooth against the spine of the book to make a little crease. You see what I'm saying there? Then you can just open it back up and that is going to be your line or your guide to use Dollar Tree's Jot Stencil. And then you can spell out whatever you want. You can spell out your kids' names, your cat's names. I love fall, harvest blessings, which is what I ended up doing. And this is totally reusable. Then when you're done, just tape the other ends of the sides. And there's so many ways you can style these books. You can leave them just like this. You can tie some twine around there. Or another idea is just to take a Dollar Tree pumpkin and some spare florals, set it off to the side, and this screams fall <laughs> to me anyways. I just love how simple it is and we're not, ever, once again, any everything can be reused. Nothing's glued or permanent. For Christmas and fall, Dollar Tree sells these Super adorable, I'm trying to use something besides the word cute here, <laughs> gift boxes. And the prints are always amazing. So they had this one last year, I'm sure they'll have this one or something probably better. Just cut it down with an X-Acto knife or some type of sharp cutting crafting tool. And then this one happened to be, there wasn't enough contrast and dimension. I just chased it, no, I didn't chase it, I traced it <laughs> with a white chalk marker. Using, okay, this is the first time ever, by the way, this is the first DIY I tried using Dollar Tree's wood colored beads. And I'm gonna go ahead and let you know, I tried spray painting it with Walmart's 97 cent spray paint. Horrible, horrible. After three coats, this is what it looked like. Pastel colors did not work out. Since making this video, I do know you can use Rust-Oleum spray paint, which is only $3.50 to $4 a can, totally worth the money. After one really thick coat, you pretty much have full coverage. This is what it looks like. So you can do that. You can spray paint them. But at the time, I didn't know about that. What I did, I just went back and used Rust-Oleum's chalk paint and painted them instead. So you could definitely just chalk paint from the, chalk paint them from the get-go. Hot glue the two ends of the box together and you have a cute sign. So even though this, this DIY could have been better, I still think it's a good idea and I still think it's worth noting. Keep an eye out for these signs. They have really great print, prints and there's so many things that can be done with them. Another super simple DIY are these little wood leaf cutouts. I really hate how the hole is at the top of the leaf. I wish it was at the stem. So I did cut that off, use the jot letters and traced out an H. Wasn't about to get fooled into using Dollar Tree's beads again. I found these beads from Michael's on Saturdays. They have the best coupons. Used a coupon, got them for $4.50. And I have those same beads linked in the description. They're still the same $7.50 full price. And you can still use a coupon and get them less. Like I said, try going on Saturdays. I just attached this to some twine and made a cute little personalized tassel. Such a simple fall DIY that can be added to anything in the house around a pumpkin, around a vase, lay it over some books, use it as a bookmark. I just love stuff like this. Then another idea is I use the same Michaels beads, string them up and to make my banner so I can change it out through the season, use some paper clips or some ornament hangers and just glue it on the back of the leaf. Once again, I really wish the hole was at the stem. I hate how they're at the top. I don't like them hanging that way. So I, yes, I know that there's a hole. I hung them upside down intentionally. I probably should go back and fill it with some wood filler, but I still love the way it turned out. It's just a simple way that you can use a banner year round without fully having to commit it to a season. You know, you get more bang for your buck if you feel me. Lastly, I had one leaf left over after all these DIYs. So I just painted it black, hot glued it to the middle of one of these Dollar Tree shadow boxes and called it a day. That's it. I mean, you can do this with anything really, but there's another idea if you have some of these left over. 
Super simple, Beyond, maybe even more, e maybe even easier than just framing something, I don't know. And this next DIY is another wreath. I absolutely love wreaths. They're one of my favorite things to make and decorate with, especially during fall and Christmas. All you need, now I, I would, this was total overkill. I didn't know how many I would need, but all you need is one bag of Dollar Tree's leaves. I separated out the colors I wanted. I wanted more of yellows and greens and removed the deep reds and the red oranges. Then just hot glue them all over the wreath. Now this wreath is not from Dollar Tree. My Dollar Tree did not carry the willow wreaths forever in a day, but they do now. So you could definitely use a Dollar Tree's willow wreath just the same. And that's it. Just glue the leaves on to your wreath. And this is a really simple, natural, you know, nature type looking fall, traditional fall decor, which I really do love. I really do love the yellows and the burnt oranges for fall. So I don't, but I don't know how I'm decorating this year. You're gonna have to let me know how you're decorating. I feel like a lot more people are going back to the traditional fall colors. This next DIY, any shadow box that is sticks out more like a hard canvas from Dollar Tree. This free printable is also linked in the description. Print that out and trace it out. I used, for the first time ever, this was the first DIY I used a glue stick to attach something to a frame. And at first it did not work out well for me. I've gotten better at this and a uh, helpful tip now, just do it like wallpaper or contact paper. Start at, Don't start in the middle, start at one side and work your way down. I've got the hang of it now, but at this time I did not. And this is a cute, simple, easy DIY too, just to put in your bathroom or on a table for decor. Another really easy wreath is just taking one of the willow wreaths from Dollar Tree, five cotton stems, and we are not gluing anything to this wreath either, y'all. All you do, take your stems and wrap them all the way around the wreath. Just wrap them around. Do not glue, nothing. And the great thing is, once again, all of this can be reused. And of course, you can do this with any of Dollar Tree's longer floral picks, which are always a great deal for a dollar any type of longer floral stem they have, you can't find something like that anywhere else full price. Lastly, you have made it to the end and you're still here, you're amazing. You just need a large jar that are sold at Dollar Tree or you can reuse a pickle jar. Use some Mod Podge and one of Dollar Tree's scarves. These are the see-through kind, not the fuzzy wool type and just start rolling this around your jar. Now I wanna go ahead and say up front, um, in my mind, this craft was gonna be a lot easier than it actually was. It's not hard, it's just the scarf would move around and stretch and pull. So getting it to lay straight and even was harder than I thought. And then on the bottom to get it to lay down, I had to go back and cut the corners off. So it would curve with the vase. Does that make sense? For the top, I left it cut open as is, and I decided just to tie something around the top. It would be easier than trying to form it to the vase. Using some raffia, I just wrapped it around and tied a little bow, but you could do whatever you wanted. You wouldn't even have to do this. What I love about this DIY are these scarves are see-through. So you can see like lights through them, or it's not totally opaque or transparent. You feel me? You can use some fairy lights, just like I'm doing right now. Stick some florals in there and call it a day. Very traditional, very cute, and this looks great outside in my opinion, or you could use it indoors, just the same. If you're still here, my mind is blown because this is the longest video I've ever uploaded. But if you are still here, that means like you were in it for the long haul, too legit to quit, I need to know. <laughs> What type of fall videos do you want to see first? What type of DIYs? How are you decorating for fall? I'm actually changing up my style a little bit. I'm going for more of like a natural, minimalistic type fall feel. Um, you know, I never really went all out for fall anyways, just throw out a few pumpkins. And here I am rambling again. So just let me know what you want to see, what you're interested in seeing and how you're decorating. Give me some inspiration. If you're on IG, DM me if you need to. All right, my